and you're tuned to listener-sponsored, non-commercial WBAI in New York City, 99.5 FM, streaming at WBAI.org, 9 p.m. Friday night, time for Untitled with Malika Lee Whitney. Good evening, everyone. We're off to a good start, aren't we? I'm Malika Lee Whitney, the host and producer of Untitled, and uh, this week we have another group of special folks with interesting things to share. Taylor Neuville, founder and executive director of Who Speaks for Me, Ulysses Scott Williams of Harlem Arts Crawl, Diara and Das Fitz. African Diaspora International Film Festival, and Clarissa Clay. Let's not waste any time. We'll get right to it. I'm looking forward to opening up the line to Ulysses Scott Williams. I was inspired to make this um, particular musical selection because of the artwork that I happened to see, but I will let Brother Ulysses talk to us about it. Hello, good evening, and thank you so much for joining us. Good evening, Malika Whitney. Thank you for having me on. Oh, my pleasure. And uh, you're going to talk to us about the uh, Harlem Arts Crawl. And uh, yes. let's let's begin with um, how long it's been in existence and when did you come on board? Well, it's Art Crawl Harlem, and Art Crawl Harlem was actually founded uh, back in 2008 by Jacqueline Orange and Avalyn Archer. Um, and they wanted to start... A art the, Harlem's first trolley guided gallery art tour, and they did that for several years, uh, uh, hosting tours uh, from Central Harlem to the El Barrio and further uptown. And then they transitioned in 2016 to an art, a nonprofit status, arts education, and the mission was um, to promote the exposure of professional and emerging artists and galleries in Harlem and cultural institutions. I would imagine, uh, and that's not hard to do because we're really in the thick of a pandemic, so a lot of uh, programs that would inc- would require people moving about, gathering in numbers, are not as much possible as they once were. And how much has this affected you and your role there? Well, of course, our program, the programming was much more expansive in the earlier stages. Um, it included uh, everything from a art battle to um, a rent party to exhibits being held at up to three um, galleries and being able to host uh, tours. But um, we consolidated it into uh, one exhibition uh, at Kinte Royal Gallery, uh, which opened on Thursday, December 3rd, and will run through January uh, 3rd, 2021. Um, and we have 18 extraordinary artists on exhibit currently there at Kinte Royal Gallery. Um, it, it had its challenges, um, but I was, as you can say, hell-bent on seeing it happen. Um, so for those people who might not feel comfortable coming to the gallery space, we are planning, planning some virtual programming also to expand the audience. Are the artists that are showing both uh, emerging, established, and what was the criteria for their participation? There is a theme, which we will definitely get to, um, that has to do with the Harlem Renaissance. So speak to that, won't you? Yeah, there was a selection process. All the artists that were considered had to apply. Uh, So we received their application. We received their CVs and resumes. Um, They submitted five works of art. Um, for us to consider, and the themes, um, the themes right now, they, they cross so many different b- boundaries. We wanted to make sure that we not only touched on where the Harlem, from the Harlem Renaissance point, but things that 
that um, actually inspired the Harlem Renaissance, from the Great Migration, even all the way back to slavery. And then we wanted to come forward and really consider the whole, the entire hundred years that followed. So we included themes of, of love and sexual identity, um, uh, health crises, um, and so on. So the, uh, it speaks on so many different levels to people when they see the exhibit. And the title, Fire and Soul, there's more to it. Um, share with us how that begins to describe what folks can hope to see. Well, I think that Fire and Soul, Fire and Soul was actually an ode to uh, Fire, the literary publication that uh, Langston Hughes and Zora Neale Hurston and a lot of people of the Harlem Renaissance period that um, uh, had a part in. And if people don't know, Fire... It was only published once uh, it, it, from their downtown location here in New York City, and it was only published once because right after that publication, their, uh, their offices burned. And then The Soul comes from W.E.B. Du Bois, um, and the, the double mindset of the black consciousness and experience in America. So I brought them both together for a consideration of this, um, this exhibit. And also we have a range of artists from emerging to, um, to our professional, when we talk about someone like uh, Magdala Charles, who just started painting not too long ago, um, and, we t and we go all the way to Thomas Heath uh, from the Heath Gallery, um, who is really growing his own legacy um, here in Harlem, and Guy Faloche, who has, as of recently, been getting a lot of public exposure due to his philanthropy and purchase of, um, of artwork over the COVID pandemic period. Since you mentioned uh, literary aspects, is there some part of what's on show uh, that will encompass words, spoken word, or panel discussions or anything of the sort? Malika, you are reading my mind because I wanted to make a special announcement tonight because we had a call for poetry and spoken word artists, and um, I wanted to announce who the winner is. If you don't ta -da -da -da, mind. Ta -da -da, ta -da -da. <laughs> Go right ahead. So we actually had four um, people apply. Um, their names are Masad, Rafay, um, Kwasi Shabazz, uh, Tamu Favorite, uh, Carla Cherry, and Troy Longmire. And we chose, or not we chose, my um, jury of readers chose uh, Carla Cherry and her Ode to Harlem uh, poem. So... Um, the, she will receive a $200 stipend uh, for that submission, and we're also going to have a virtual program around the literary works and invite all of those uh, literary artists to, um, to recite. And the, artists, the other three remaining artists, they'll receive a $50 st a stipend apiece. Every little bit helps. Um, the, Harlem does. Uh, the Harlem Renaissance um, has great significance and importance to the community and it's, it's, it's history that we hope won't get lost. And I'm always curious about how young people uh, can access information so that, you know, the very grounds that they're walking around in their respective communities can be something that they would be proud of. Is there some opportunity for, I like intergenerational activities. Is there some opportunity for young people to be involved, school-age children specifically? Of course. Um, virtually. We are planning a virtual engagement just for children and literary arts. Um, and my co-curator, Nakia Hicks, is going to res be responsible for planning that, and we look forward to announcing the dates um, soon. And the exhibit location is in Harlem, very near to Strivers Row. So let's talk about Doji's Joint <laughs> Doji's and, and how that is... partnership came into being. Doji's Joint is amazing, as you know. It's right at 2373 Adam Clayton Powell on the cor near the corner of 139th Street. Um, you can't miss it. The large windows, people can see the exhibit or any exhibit uh, there right from the outside, and it's quite inviting. Um, I started this conversation with Doji uh, in November of 2019. That's how long the planning process has taken. Um, and he's always been on board and encouraging uh, this exhibit to occur. And then recently, I guess about a month and a half ago, I, I asked him to be the co-curator 
because it was really time to make sure that this happened. Um, so he's been very supportive. Um, he's happy with the exhibit. He's happy with the amount of foot traffic that has been attracted to the exhibit. Um, and he's getting more exposure than Art Crawl Harlem is, you know. So it's been a great um, partnership, let's say. And in terms of, you know, moving uh, work like this forward, um, we're planning for times that are, quite frankly, unpredictable. Um, but you always have to have some idea about the growth spurts that you can achieve even in light of uh, challenges, and what are they for you, like what you hope you can look forward to in the future? Oh, well, our future, uh, we look forward to it being quite, quite bright. I don't know if I mentioned to you when I met you that we were fortunate enough to actually have an artist residency program, our inaugural artist residency program this year. Um, uh, starting, it started in August through uh, October. Um, we had two great artists there, Ricky Day and Demarcus McGoy, and we also had Lisa um, Du Bois, who did an art installation there in the house. Um, we did it safely, and we look forward to um, hosting another extraordinary artist residency on Governor's Island and doing more exhibits, such as the one we have going on now, Fire and Soul, 100 Years of Harlem, at Kinte Royal Gallery. Great. Well, I hope uh, Doji doesn't take offense to me referencing the gallery as a joint, but when you mentioned <laughs> Harlem Renaissance, you know, the joint is jumping, you know, so that's the context <laughs> that I respectfully uh, made the reference to. So, again, uh, my online guest is Ulysses Scott Williams, and um, please give the full title of the exhibition, uh, location, and its time on the wall. Sure. It's uh, Fire and Soul, 100 Years of Harlem at Kinte Royal Gallery at 2373 Adam Clayton Powell on Boulevard. And the hours are Wednesday through Friday, tw uh, 2 p.m. to 8 p.m., Saturday and Sunday, 12 noon to 8 p.m. And I also would like to invite everyone to our virtual programming on Saturday, December 19th. It will be hosted by the co-director of the Romare Bounded, uh, Bearden Foundation, Ms. Deirdre Harris-Kelly. And that will be at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Wonderful. Well, I want to thank you so much. I think we got it all in. I appreciate your time, and I'm glad we were able to uh, bring this conversation to fruition. And wish you a very, very pleasant evening. And I'll certainly come and have a second look and spread the word. So do take care. Uh, take care of yourself. Take care of those you love. And uh, be well. Take care. You got I'm it. I'm Malika Lee Whitney, and you're tuned to Untitled WBAI New York.